the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada stampedes into Calgary, where the brews are ice cold and the barbecue is smoking. Patty's Brewbecue, 11 out of 10. And the community comes together for a great cause. Partnering with the Alberta Diabetes Association and working with the Mackenzie Tour is fantastic. The action heats up at Country Hills as the race for the top five Titans. And a new champion is crowned at the ATB Financial Classic. All that and more next. is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. The Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada landed in Calgary for one of the longest running tournaments on the tour schedule, the ATB Financial Classic. Last year's champion, Chase Wright, currently sits 10th on the web.com tour money list after capturing the Rust-Oleum Championship and is on the cusp of earning a PGA Tour card proving once again that the Mackenzie Tour is the first step on the journey to golf's biggest stage. And with the season winding down, now is the time for players to make a move. Only the top 60 on the order of merit will tee it up at the season-ending Freedom 55 Financial Championship in London, which also guarantees status on the Mackenzie Tour in 2019. The top five, well, that comes with status on the web.com tour next year. Entering the ATB Financial Classic, Ben Griffin occupied the fifth position thanks to his win in Thunder Bay. With his win in Victoria earlier this summer, plus two top tens, Sam Fidone sits comfortably in fourth, just behind the 22-year-old winner of the Golf BC Championship, George Cunningham. Zach Wright started off strong with six top tens in his first six starts, and he has a lock on the number two spot, just behind two-time champion Tyler McCumber, whose back-to-back -back victories have him out front by a comfortable margin. But a good week at Country Hills Golf Club could shake up the order of merit as the race for the top five nears completion. After remarkable back-to-back -back victories in Caledon and Edmonton, Tyler McCumber reflects on his amazing play this season and plays a round with his dad, 10-time PGA Tour champ Mark McCumber, in this week's On the Bag. That was an exciting experience, for sure. Uh, you know, it was, um, it was a fun week. We had... Uh, you know, obviously going into it, knowing that it's a family design, McCumber Golf, and then had my cousin on the bag, and obviously playing solid. So it was just a, a culmination of fun stuff, for sure. Talk about playing a course your dad designed. I mean, how awesome was it to win on a course your dad designed? It was neat. It was cool from a playing standpoint. I could see some of the stuff he'd always talk to me about and what he likes on golf courses and some of the things he tries to achieve throughout uh, you know, their design as a team. And so I could kind of just visually see it and, and not only get to experience it, but compete on it. So, and see how it held up under pressure. Well, you mentioned someone else that you were winning that tournament for. Talk to us about that storyline. Oh yeah, you know, obviously I, I talked to my dad quite a bit uh, during the week. Uh, he was covering uh, the World Golf Championship in Akron. So we were on the phone at night once they were off air. But, um, you know, my mom shot me a text uh, in the morning. Sunday morning was, you know, Gave me the emoji, go win this one for me. <laughs> so, I, so I guess I did. I have to give her that one. So, 159. What did we play? Like six percent altitude. It was about when he was 12 or 13 when he said to me, "Dad, I, I, how long would it take if I wanted to get good?" I said, "Well, if you really want to dedicate yourself to it, you'll find out in a couple of years how good you are." And he won the state junior uh, in the state of Florida at 15, which was, you know, Florida's a pretty big golf town. Then he won the state amateur when he was at school, played college golf at Florida. And, you know, he's been fortunate to kind of win all the way along. So there's always been signs that he can play good, and he's just at the start of his career. But uh, I think things are, you know, I think there's certainly a lot of opportunities for him to do something that he enjoys to make a living. <laughs> He's got all kind of bragging rights. The other day when he shot the 61, he said with a smile on his voice, Dad, how many 61s did you shoot professional golf, knowing that I never came close to doing that? 
it like for you to have your dad hanging out with you? Oh, it's really fun. You know, he came to Vancouver to kick off the season, but since then we haven't seen each other because I haven't been home. It's fun to have him on the road. We always have a good time. We eat good restaurants and, yeah. <laughs> now, he was just telling me that he, he won that one for mom because mom, mom didn't get a lot of mentions. <laughs> Mothers never get enough mentions. I would not have had the chance to play the tour and, and, and have some success on the tour without his mother. 44 years she's put up with me. She's raised three beautiful children. He's the baby. He gets no attention from two older sisters and his mom, so mom deserved that one, no question about it. Nice. Are you here the whole week? Yeah, you're here the whole week. Oh, that's great. That's Until good. Monday. Tyler McCumber's hot hand continued as he teed it up in the first round of the ATB Financial Classic. He merely matched the course record with an eight under 63, grabbing his share of the lead. It was his sixth sub 65 round in his last nine, and the Florida native doesn't look to be cooling off anytime soon. In his last two starts at Country Hills Golf Club, he's walked away with T2 and T6 finishes. Joining McCumber in a three-way tie atop the leaderboard, Jonathan Garrick and Chris Kilmer. Kilmer, ranked 99th on the order of merit, caught fire with five consecutive birdies in his first six holes en route to his lowest career round on the McKenzie Tour. Sitting 72nd in the rankings, Garrick threatened a 59 after getting it to nine under with five holes to play, but the 24-year-old closed with four pars and a bogey and settled into a tie for first. I haven't played well this year, to be honest, but I kind of got something going on the range earlier in the week. I was prepared for a good round. I just didn't know it would be eight under. I've been around a lot of cut lines, and I've had to make birdies or make pars on the 36 hole to make the cut, which just isn't very fun. So this is a lot better position to be in. After the break, it's second round action at the ATB Financial Classic. But first. All right, boys. Cheers. Cheers. Parker Dudley and Ben Pollan get a taste of Calgary. We're lucky enough to have a job where we can travel and then you come to Calgary and you have this whole kind of culture of breweries, it's great. When this is the Mackenzie Tour, PGA Tour Canada returns. This is the Mackenzie Tour, PGA Tour Canada. In the heart of Calgary's Barley Belt, a unique brewery is also serving up some southern style barbecue on the side, coined as Calgary's first brewbecue. I'm Patty Sorrenti. Uh, this is my place, Patty's Barbecue and Brewery. Today we're going to be taking Ben and Parker around. We're going to be showing them how to make beer and we're going to get them to try some of the beers and we're going to get them to try some of our delicious barbecue as well. Before playing the ATB Financial Classic, Ben Pollan and Parker Dudley went behind the scenes at the brewbecue. Nice to meet you, Parker. Ben. Ben, nice to meet you. Nice Welcome. Nice to meet you, too. You ready to make some beer? Absolutely. Wicked. Welcome to our brewery. Uh, this is it, pretty much all you see here. So we are a uh, small two-vessel, five-hectoliter brewery. Uh, we have our six fermenters here, and right now they're housing six different beers that we will put on tap in the, uh, the weeks to come. So I'm going to take you down right now, and uh, I'm going to show you how to uh, make beer. Get all, right. all right. We're going to do, like, some different steps in making beer. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so this is our, our malt that we're gonna be using today. This is what beer comes from right here. This is the base. And you see these like little little white guys in here? Yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this malt through this mill here, and it's gonna crack the husk off, and it's gonna expose the sugar, and that's what we want. Okay. And you guys are gonna, just gonna dump that in here for me. And cool. this is our malt mill, and we're gonna mill this grain. Okay. Whole thing? Yeah, pick okay, that cool. thing up. Yeah. Dump that whole thing in there. Perfect. Four main ingredients in beer. There is barley, hops, water, and yeast. And water is a big part of it. And we got some really great water here. It comes from the Rockies. Uh, and we make some of the best barley. Like a lot of the beer that you probably drink, Yeah. it's all Alberta barley. Wow. Take these? Yeah, grab these buckets. Welcome to the brewery. This is where the magic happens. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna mash in into our mash tun. Uh, it's one of the steps in the brewing process in the first one. Essentially, we are gonna take hot water and mix it with that grain. And then that's how we make alcohol. Just with the water, just trying to start dumping her in. Now, 
now we'll, uh, we'll get used to try some beer off a of fermenter. So this is always fun. All right, boys. Cheers. 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 To patties. Mm-hmm. You can taste the, like more carbonation. It's yeah. so fresh. Wow. It's so patty nosey stuff. Brew some great beer. Cool to see the backside of it and not just the at the tap and at the bar. I mean, who doesn't love cold beer and learn how it's made? All right. Sure, have a seat at the bar, boys. Have a seat. Yeah, that's good. Wow. Thank you. You're very welcome. <laughs> The Country Hills Golf Club course record changed hands on day two after Lee Hodges posted a nine under par 62 in the ATB Financial Classic. The Alabama native closed with three consecutive birdies and climbed into his share of the lead. That was a good round. Uh, I was pretty much in control of my game the whole time. Uh, struck it really, really nicely. I think I hit every green. Not many times was outside 15 feet. So uh, I was really a good ball striking day. I made some good putts down the stretch, very last three holes. So. Uh, Overall, pretty good day. After opening with a 63 and a share of the lead, Chris Kilmer fired a bogey-free 65 on day two to remain atop the leaderboard. But after missing his previous two cuts, he wasn't expecting much in Calgary. Kilmer has already posted six top 10 finishes this year on PGA Tour Latino America, but the 31-year-old from Bellingham, Washington, just couldn't find his form north of the border. That is, until now. Already in peak form, Tyler McCumber's incredible run continued on Friday with a five under 66. He managed to stay within one of the leaders and in a tie for third alongside Corey Pereira, who fired his second straight round in the 60s. Jonathan Garrick, part of the opening round trio of leaders, fell back into ninth place, five shots off the lead after a 69 on day two. Coming up after the break on this is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. This is Taco Wednesday. So what we got here is our house smoked brisket. We do it in a uh, corn tortilla with some slaw, a little chimichurri and pickled red onions. The gastronomic excursion continues at Patty's, and then it's moving day at the ATB Financial Classic when we return on this is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. This is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. After Ben Polland and Parker Dudley's exclusive brewery tour, they bellied up for some of Patty's Brewbecue before the start of competition. Here's where we keep our smoker. So the other end of our business, when we're not making beer, we're barbecuing stuff. So barbecue restaurant, this is our trailer smoker. We use it for a lot of offsite events, but it makes great brisket and even better turkey. And I think right now, Turkey. So, it has about a 250 pound capacity, this bad boy. It's uh, rotisserie, wood fired, and it has a little fan in it. So you can hear the, hear the, hear the fire kicking back up again, getting that wood going. We do brisket, ribs, turkey. Uh, we make our own sausages in house as well. And most of our sauces are old vinegar based as well. Yeah. yeah. Try to keep like our, our slaws or vinegar, but lots of vinegar. Yeah. I love vinegar yeah, too. Vinegar. Awesome stuff. So, these are our smoked chicken wings and fries, and then this is Taco Wednesday. So, so what we got here is our house smoked brisket. We do it in a uh, corn tortilla with some slaw, a little chimichurri, and pickled red onions. I just wanted you to experience a bit of this before you guys take off. Jump in your patty. Cool. You have this whole kind of culture of breweries that Patty's telling us about, and doing that sort of thing everywhere you travel, it's great because you just you learn more about the world and what other people are doing, and it's, it's just a great opportunity. Patty's Brubecue, 11 out of 10. Going low was the theme for moving day at the ATB Financial Classic, and several players used the ideal scoring conditions at Country Hills Golf Club to break free from a tight leaderboard. A familiar name in that pack was Order of Merit leader Tyler McCumber, who gained momentum after an eagle on the par 5 13th. He added four more birdies to his card to shoot 65. Coming off back-to-back -back wins in his last two events, McCumber headed into Sunday three strokes off the lead. 
Meanwhile, overnight co-leader Lee Hodges carded his first eagle of the week at number seven to make the turn in 32. Adding three more birdies to his card, the recent Alabama grad signed for a 64. Good enough for solo second after 54 holes. Sitting just one shot off the lead after two rounds, Corey Pereira separated himself from the pack on day three, firing off five birdies on the front nine. His stellar performance continued thanks to four more birdies down the stretch. He signed for a course record matching nine under 62. It was awesome. I had a great time out there. I've had my experience being in the lead and handling that, and I think I'll take a, a little bit from those experiences and, yeah, try to have a good day tomorrow. Shooting the lowest score of his McKenzie Tour career, Pereira will have to trust his game in order to grasp that first win. I have a tremendous amount of confidence. I'm playing really good golf right now. Uh, I've played well last few events and the game's trending the right way. And at the same time, I gotta sit down and refocus and trust my process and stay calm tomorrow. With a win, Pereira would move up into the five, taking over the fifth spot, one step closer to possibly securing his place in the next level of competition. I feel like I'm in a good position to keep my card. I'm playing aggressive right now, I'm playing to win. I don't have much to lose. I think that's a good position to be in. Can Pereira hold on to clinch his first ever McKenzie Tour title? Or will someone chase him down in the final round of the ATV Financial Classic? Find out after the break. But first. This new partnership means the world to our foundation as we are celebrating our 30th anniversary of research investment in the province of Alberta. We're always playing for a purpose when this is the McKenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada returns. This is the McKenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. The Alberta Diabetes Foundation funds research and prevention of all forms of diabetes, and it's celebrating 30 years of research this year. They continue to raise awareness worldwide and have partnered with the ATB Financial Classic in hopes of finding a cure. This new partnership is a huge new collaboration. It means the world to our foundation as we are celebrating our 30th anniversary of research investment in the province of Alberta. The community can get involved and support two great causes, both for junior sports programming as well as diabetes research in Calgary. The fact that so much of the money going back is going to have a direct impact in the local community is just tremendous. ATB is really known in the province for all of our corporate and social responsibility. This year, the Alberta Diabetes Association is a great partnership with us in Alberta, and they run a great association, and we're just proud to be partnering with them this year. The ATB Financial Classic proudly supports the Alberta Diabetes Foundation alongside its official charity, the Stampeders Foundation, making this event an integral part of the Calgary community. ATB loves this event. We love to host our clients out here. Customers love coming out, meeting the pros, Having a great round of golf in the morning and the afternoon is really fantastic for us. At ATB, we are a real family-run organization. With all the volunteers that come out at five o'clock in the morning and get the table set up and get everything to go for our customers and our hosts. Partnering with the Alberta Diabetes Association and working with the McKenzie Tour is fantastic. Sunday's final round featured a two-man duel between a pair of 23-year-olds vying for their first professional victory. University of Washington grad Corey Pereira teed it up alongside Alabama's Lee Hodges in the final pairing of the day, and it was a battle to the very last putt. Pereira began the day with a one-stroke advantage, but was put on the defensive after Hodges took a share of the lead with back-to-back -back birdies on one and two. Lee and I had a great time today and we're good buddies and uh, we were cheering each other on to some point and wanted to beat each other to some point, so it was, it was a good day. The two friends were tied again through 12 holes when an hour and a half long rain delay forced players off the course. Once play resumed, so did their back and forth battle until Pereira took the lead with a 20 foot birdie putt on 17. It was a battle all day. Lee played awesome golf and really challenged me out there. And it didn't look like I was losing it or it didn't look like I was winning it. It was just, you know, Lee was playing good, I was playing good, and um, we were kind of going back and forth all day. For Pereira, the week in Calgary was a chance at redemption. In 2017, he held a share of the 54-hole lead, 
but a 43 on the back nine dropped the then first year pro into a tie for 30th. Learning from that experience, Pereira closed with a par and a final round 67 to finish one shot clear of Hodges for his first professional victory. Really, until I made my last putt on 18, I, I didn't feel like I was in control, and, um, but at the same time, I was playing good golf. Just, it felt like all my hard work was kind of paying off, and I know how cheesy that may sound, but um, it really did feel incredible. The win vaults Pereira all the way up from the 24th spot on the order of merit into the fifth. McCumber, who finished in solo third, solidified his number one standing, while Zach Wright gained ground at number two with a T5 finish in Calgary. George Cunningham and Sam Fedone, both champions this year, are packed in tight at three and four, and should Pereira keep the fifth spot at season's end, he would receive status on the web.com tour for 2019. I think it just proves to myself that I can win out here, and I can win at the next level too. Um, so it, it's not so much more of a standing thing for me, but just proving to myself I can do it. Next week, we make the trek east to Winnipeg, Manitoba for the Players' Cup, where last season, Kramer Hickok claimed his first of two titles on the way to clinching the top spot in the Order of Merit. It was an awesome feeling. That's the type of stuff that we dream of, just making putts to win. This is why I came to this tour, right? To try and win and play against, honestly, some of the best players in the world. The talent level is insane. This is getting us ready for the PJ Tour, and there's nothing like it. Who will take that step this year? Find out next time on This is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada.